is an ABC color presentation. This is a... Hello, I'm June Lockhart. Things you aren't using can be given new life when you give them to the Salvation Army. And the refurbishing of your items can provide work therapy to help men and women recover from complex problems. So please help. Call for the Red Shield truck. You can even take a tax deduction. Watch Richard Rose. He's proving that epilepsy can be overcome today. Thanks to effective treatment, many people with epilepsy, like Richard, are achieving goals you never thought possible. Epilepsy, it's not what you think. Ask the people who know. Write Epilepsy Foundation of America, Washington, D.C., 20013. WABC-TV, New York. I don't think that there is anything more difficult or more disheartening that I have to do as a rabbi than walk into a funeral chapel. I realize that no matter what prayers I read or what words I use, none will help to remove or in any way mitigate the pain that fills the hearts of the family. But I have learned not just as a rabbi, but also as a child that has lost a parent, that you cannot have life without death, just as you cannot have sunshine without clouds or dawn without dust. There is a most meaningful story that is told of two children playing in a garden. All of a sudden, both of them run into the house. One child turns to her mother and says, Mother, the garden is such an ugly place to be in. Why do you say that, asked the mother. Because wherever I turn, I see roses, but each rose is surrounded by thorns that hurt me. The other says, Mother, the garden is a beautiful place to be in. Why do you say that? The child answers, wherever I turn, I see thorns, but each thorn is surrounded by roses. Let us remember that while some people only see thorns, others see roses. Thus, if today we cry, yesterday we most likely smiled with our beloved. If today we are impoverished, yesterday we were, were enriched. And if today we feel thorns, then yesterday we beheld roses. This is station WABC-TV New York, channel 7, key station in the ABC television network. WABC-TV studios are located at the ABC Television Center, 7 Lincoln Square, New York. Programs are transmitted from the top of the World Trade Center in Manhattan with a frequency of 174 to 180 megahertz. WABC-TV operates on channel 7 by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. Now speaking for the entire staff, this is Wally Parker wishing you a pleasant good night and inviting you to join us this morning at 625 for more outstanding entertainment on Channel 7. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Channel 7, WABC-TV, New York. You're watching Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Ernie Anastas.
and Roz Abrams, Sam Champion with weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Later in Eyewitness News, WNBC Radio will be signing off for good as a channel swap takes place. The sounds of WNBC Radio will be silenced in a few minutes. Garrett Glazer will tell you how they're signing off for good. Back in the news, we have this story for you tonight. You know, for 62 years, WNBC Radio has been part of New York, but no more. The station has been sold, the call letters are changing, and so is the format. Entertainment reporter Gary Glazer is here now with details on the changing of the dial. Ernie, Roz, at exactly 5.30 tonight, MS Broadcasting will transfer its all-sports WFAN radio from 10.50 to 6.60 on the AM dial. That frequency has long been home for the flagship radio station of the national broadcasting company, NBC. That is, until NBC, part of RCA, was sold to General Electric, which soon decided it would get out of the radio business. A farewell get-together in the corridors at the station today. A chance to say goodbye and good luck. Million-dollar morning man Don Imus will keep his job. He'll report to new management Monday. He did not want to talk today. Sportscaster Don Cricky is another survivor. Well, they're great call letters, you know, in this business, and I guess it's part of the evolution of uh, radio that uh, they go away. General manager Peg Kelly told me some here are sad, others relieved that the dark day is finally here. Well, I guess you could just say it's a business decision. Um, GE bought NBC a couple of years ago and made the decision to get out of the radio business. Back in the newsroom, it was quiet and sad. And in business affairs, Harvey Eckstein was still at his desk, as he's been for 31 years. I'm really sad about not so much me going, but the fact that the station will just completely disappear when people turn on WNBC in the morning. There will be no WNBC. But the end of WNBC radio is also something else, for this is a station that made history, that broke new ground back when broadcasting was in its infancy. The biggest stars in the world worked for NBC Radio, Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, Eddie Cantor, Groucho Marx, Al Jolson, Jimmy Durante, Red Skelton, Fanny Bryce, Burns and Allen, Ozzie and Harriet, Jack Benny and Mary Livingston. Tonight, WNBC air personality Alan Colmes will preside over the final sign-off. Uh, I've listened to the station since the early 1950s, when Bill Cullen was the morning man. Uh, to be the one to preside over the final moments is the greatest honor I've had in my career. But it's so sad to see the dismantling of the radio empire of NBC. This is radio. NBC is synonymous with radio. The company was founded on radio, and this is called Radio City. So uh, to lose that is, is saddening. WNBC Radio 66 AM meets its demise in its 66th year on the air. Proof, if you need it, of just how profound and turbulent are the changes going on in broadcasting in this country today. You know, 66, 660 AM is a clear channel, 50,000 watt station. You can hear it in 35 Horrible. states at night, which is why it's so valuable to yeah. broadcasters. So many of us have had a uh, background in radio, so yes. we uh, take a moment Everybody. to salute the great moments on WNBC Radio over yes, those sir. many years. Sorry to see you go. Yep. Thank you, Garrett. KMCY is ABC 14 for Western North Dakota. And so we come to the end of another day of telecasting. We sincerely hope you have enjoyed the programs we have presented for you today. We will return to the air tomorrow morning with our regularly scheduled programs. KMCY TV is owned by KBMY KMCY LLC and operates on a power of 510,000 watts visual and 90,000 watts oral on channel 14 by permission of the Federal Communications Commission. Studios and offices are located at 3425 South Broadway, Minot, North Dakota, and our transmitter is located at South Prairie, North Dakota. We hope you have enjoyed the programs presented today on your ABC station for Western North Dakota, KMCY-TV, ABC 14, and hope you join us tomorrow for another day of telecasting.
Elliot are there, his wife Susie, and their two children, Sebastian and Oliver, are there as well. Uh, no further information coming from the hospital yet uh, from uh, Jamie Little. As soon as we do get word either there or here, we'll pass it along. And there is the captain, Roger Penske, talking it over with his team. You know, and Roger has been involved with the sport so many years, Eddie, as you know, and um, all through the, the decades that we had when injuries were um, very strong, not only injuries but deaths, and I think of uh, Mark Donahue who drove for him and yes. was, uh, was killed. It's a, it's a difficult situation, but uh, we're all in this as a family because we love the sport. A, a very big family, and there is absolutely nothing that can prepare you for moments like this. All right, we are getting word that there's Randy right. Bernard. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family today. IndyCar, its drivers and team owners, has decided to end the race. In honor of Dan Weldon, the drivers have decided to do a five-lap salute in his honor. It will take place in approximately 10 minutes. Thank you. There'll be no one-on-one -on -one interviews or questions. Thank you. Did he confirm he's All right, we came in late on that, and folks, I, this is the hardest part of our job, and the last time I had to do this was 2006 with Paul Dana, but we have lost Dan Weldon today here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. A tragic accident on lap number 13, and Dan Weldon killed today here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. There'll be a five-lap salute. Stay with us, please. What started out as an exciting day here at uh, Las Vegas Motor Speedway has ended in tragedy. The news has just been released that Dan Weldon has been killed in a crash on lap number 13 of this race in the final race of the 2011 season. You heard the tail end of an announcement by Randy Bernard, the head man at uh, the league here, that the drivers and team officials and uh, owners have gotten together and the race will not be finished. The drivers will do a five-lap tribute salute, and that should take place in a matter of minutes. But the air of excitement that started this day is completely gone, as we have lost Dan Weldon. And there's Marco Andretti, as his former teammate, killed in this tragic 15-car crash at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And we mentioned the tribute lap, all the drivers, they'll be getting back into their cars. There'll be five laps in length as soon as they get everybody together. And as I mentioned before, uh, this is the hardest part for us. Uh, the last time we had to do this was March of 2006 down at Homestead when Paul Dano was killed in practice the morning of the race there. And unfortunately, over the years, it has happened uh, too many times. Tony Rennan at Indy in a private practice. Greg Moore in 1999 at the season finale in Fontana. 99 in September, Gonzalo Rodriguez at practice during the race at Laguna Seca. Scott Brayton, of course, in 1996, practicing after he had won the pole for the Indianapolis 500. There is also the fact that Dan, who won the second time at Indy this year, He's not the first to have his life ended later in the season. In 1920, Gaston Chevrolet, he was killed later in November at a race in Beverly Hills. In 1929, Ray Keach won the race, and then June, he was killed at Altoona. In 1946, George Robson, and he later was killed at a race in Atlanta. You see all the drivers now, they're going to do that five-lap tribute, as you mentioned, Marty, and it'll be one of the most emotional laps, five laps that they've ever done in their life, Eddie, simply from the fact that they are going out there not to compete, but to give a tribute to a dear friend and colleague that has been killed today, and you're not putting your helmet on and your visor down and going into race mode. You're going out there for a tribute, and there's no doubt there will be tears shed behind the visor of all the drivers that are out there. Chip Ganassi talking there, and the, the man on the right is Don the Snake Prudhomme, the legendary drag racer. He is a huge IndyCar fan, and he is, uh, he's seen too much of this in his lifetime as well. Uh, let's take you back. If you're just tuning in, we're, we're going to take you back and give you the full, complete version of Randy Bernard's official announcement just a few minutes ago.
Andy Carr is very sad to announce that Dan Weldon has passed away from unsurvivable injury. They just okay, and, and obviously uh, you heard Rick DeBrule. He was trying to get us to get down there quickly to get the announcement at the official position of the league and we did catch the tail end of it where they had said that this race will not continue and the drivers will do a five lap tribute there's sarah fisher just two weeks ago she was on top of the world ed carpenter had just given her her first victory as a team owner winning over dario franchiti by oh so close a margin and how quickly everyone's emotions and feelings change as here we are two weeks later and as we said we were gonna celebrate not only a championship, but a Rookie of the Year championship, Danica's farewell, and maybe Dan winning $5 million if he could have won this race. And as we watch this, Marty, we've, we've said this before, this sport is a natural high when you drive. It gives you the highest highs, but it also has the lowest lows. And you don't understand that until you're involved in this sport. And as we see Dario Franchitti here, I mean, it just, it pulls your gut out in this scenario. and. Overall, it's going to be a, a case where all the drivers are going to remember this, and it's tough. It's the last race of the year, Eddie, and it's something that uh, they'll carry forward. I, I think it really is a, a beautiful statement to his life that um, they're going to do that now. They're going out now, and they're going to run those five laps. And as we see Tony Kanan, who probably knew Dan best as far as all the drivers were concerned, got in his car early and was just sitting there and contemplating and as I mentioned uh, tears probably just coming down will be emotions that uh, how can you contain them racing has lost a great champion not just not just IndyCar but a, an incredible driver with an amazing record at the Indy 500 but an enthusiasm for the sport that was very difficult to find. Just saw Elio Castroneves there. I, I heard him doing an interview earlier this weekend. As you look at Oriel Silver, there's Elio. And he, he said, it's never the fear of being on the track. He said, my fear is not having a ride. He said, I, I love this so much. Um, I, I just don't ever want to lose that ride. And that's why drivers put their foot on the gas. They don't lift. And you talk about the racing that we have here and how crazy it is at the very beginning of it. But as race drivers, you drive as hard as you can, whether it's the first few laps, the middle laps, or the last few laps. And that's what we are instilled to do. And it starts off when you start very young, Eddie, as you and I have discussed. And it goes through all the different formulas that you race at. And you want to compete. You want to win. And you're not just like that on the racetrack. You're a competitor. And everything that you do, you want to do it better than the other person. Guys, uh, I want to let everybody at home know, obviously, this, this crash has aired probably on every news outlet already across the board. And yes, it is a, a, a tragic situation in a day. I want to give you the opportunity at home. If you do not want to see this crash again, uh, go ahead and turn away. We're, we're going to go through it one more time because it really is not the safer barrier, but it's the catch fence that does so much damage in this to not just Dan's car, but to so many of the others and this is in slow motion from high above now all the drivers are very crowded going into this into this corner three abreast one of them touches goes sideways scott and then man and this is what we talked about before that these speeds at 220 miles an hour eddie you're going the length of a football field in less than a second and you don't plan your next move at this speed as you can now see the cars starting to go one over each other and they'll start to get up towards the catch fence and those are the ones the catch fences that do the damage. The safer walls we've improved really helps dissipate the energy when the cars hit, but it's the, sa the, the catch fencing that's above the safer barriers that these cars got up into, and that is what has done the damage. Another angle, and it's the second airborne car in your screen. And as you mentioned, Eddie, cars just going for the same spot, and at this speed, it just starts to go sideways. Cars start to climb up and over, and as further cars continue to come into frame, you'll see cars starting to slide through and jump into the air and now watch towards the go. catch fence, and the car now goes up. It's airborne, and Turns it gets the wrong way. vaulted, and it gets into the catch fencing with the cockpit area first, which is something that you just cannot be prepared for and there's nothing you can actually do and the, i mean there, there's nothing you can do the drivers are put into positions nothing they can do 
and here it's in slow motion but you can see how it arrives and the parts are going everywhere and it's a driver you're trying to miss the large pieces the cars themselves and parts are falling out of the sky and you really don't know where to go or what to do and if you escape this and you get through it you sort of pinch yourself when you're on the far side of it and said i made it and unfortunately some did not <laughs> last angle on this that we will show you as it's very painful to watch it is it's just it's heart-wrenching you you know these people as competitors as sometimes they're angry with what you say about them on the air but trust me when there's a these moments there it is right there and that's fence. the compact that, or the impact you were talking about Scott cockpit towards the catch fence Another view from Danica's car as she was one of the 19 that managed to make it through. She's on the lower part of the track, which was a good position to be in, but she has a bird's eye view of everything from here. And as we heard her say earlier in this telecast that she thought things were just getting a little bit crazy. She had eased off the throttle, not something that race car drivers do, but she just felt uncomfortable, had something about it's a sixth sense, if you will, and turned around and just gave herself a little bit more breathing space, which is something that worked out very well for her. Charlie Kimball's view, he was in the middle lane, had nowhere to go. And a car went right over the top of him. And there's another car flying over the top. And, and literally, I've been in these accidents, there's nothing you can do. Once it starts to happen, the momentum has to just play itself out. The number 77, Dan Weldon's car number today, has now been put at the top of the scoring pylon here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And the tribute lap as the cars are beginning to form as we salute Dan Weldon. Don't ever say race car drivers don't have emotions, that they feel nothing. That's Dario Franchitti. Probably the last thing he wants to do right now is drive a race car. This is a tough moment for everybody here. As Dan Weldon loses his life today in the series finale. As he was going for $5 million if he could have gone from 34th to 1st. His car number 77 sits atop the scoring pylon. And the 19 cars that are still able to make the laps are going to do a five-lap tribute in Dan's honor here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Vince, you've uh, got some uh, details on what was in the, the driver's meeting? Well, I've been told by one of the drivers that uh, in the driver's only gathering, Dario Franchitti and Tony Kanaan, uh, broke the news to the group of drivers that Dan had passed away. There was uh, discussion about whether or not they should continue the race. There were drivers on both sides of that fence. At that point, uh, Randy Bernard came in and uh, said that he understood it would be extremely difficult for them to make that decision at this time, considering what had just happened, and that he suggested they make a three-wide formation and do the five laps in Dan's honor. And uh, that was uh, unanimously agreed upon by the drivers that that would be the fitting way to uh, put an end to this day. I've just spoken with a member from Dan's team, and as all the cars are lining up to take this five-lap uh, five uh, honoring of Dan Weldon, Dan's team will come out and stand on pit lane as well. Very, very emotional down here, as you might imagine. Marty. And the fans uh, are standing here in the grandstands at Las Vegas Motor Speedway as they are seeing everyone come out onto pit road. It, it, it's literally being lined by all the teams. And something that we uh, mentioned before that this will be the most difficult five laps that any driver has ever done inside of a cockpit of a race car. There is Dan's team as they are making their way out to pit lane. This, this move of, of canceling the race is not unprecedented. It happened in May of 1999 at uh, Charlotte. Uh, three spectators were hit by flying debris and killed from a crash, and the race was halted. And, uh, but here today, just 12 completed laps, 
tragedy strikes in what was supposed to be a celebration of a great season, a great championship battle, a farewell to Danica Patrick as she moves on in her career. And little did we know how it would end up at this moment with all of us stunned and just literally in some disbelief because Dan Weldon is not with us to celebrate this victorious day. And I think about all the work that Dan has done on the new 2012 car that he was reporting back to all the drivers with great excitement as they anticipate the new car coming out for 2012. Uh, ironically, a new safer car, Mar Marty. Yeah, he was talking about uh, how the, the sound of it, that turbo and everything was so cool. Uh, let's go back in case you're just tuning in again to Randy Bernard's uh, Randy Bernard's announcement of uh, what was going to happen and how it happened. Andy Carr is very sad to announce that Dan Weldon has passed away from unsurvivable injury. They just Our our thoughts and prayers are with his family today. IndyCar, its drivers and team owners, has decided to end the race. In honor of Dan Weldon, the drivers have decided to do a five-lap salute in his honor. It will take place in approximately 10 minutes. Thank you. And here we are, on the track. Everybody lined up along pit lane. And there is the field of 19 cars that survived that horrific crash and made it through for the five lap salute to Dan Weldon. When they begin this five laps, folks, we're just gonna sit back and reflect with you.
So the 2011 IZOD IndyCar Series comes to a close, but not the way that any of us had anticipated nor wanted. The championship has been won, but there's no celebration.
career has ended in one sport to move on to the next, but there is no happiness. And for all of us, it is just an emptiness as we have lost truly a great racer in Dan Weldon. Jamie Little has been standing by at University Medical Center. Three others were transported, J.R. Hildebrand, Pippa Mann, and Will Power. Jamie, can you give us an update from there? I can't hear the boot. Jamie, go. Jamie, speak. University Medical Center right now in the trauma department, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of emotion here. Dan Weldon's wife, Susie, their two little boys, his three brothers and his sister were all by his side. Team owner Sam Schmidt is here. I've been told that Dan Weldon's parents are at home in England. As for Susie, his wife, a plane is going to North Carolina to bring her family here to Las Vegas. And there's a lot of friends and family surrounding the outside trauma area at this time. All right, Jamie, and, and obviously there's no more information available for J.R. Hildebrand, Pippa Mann, or Will Power as they are still being treated over at University Medical Center. With this, we close out the season, Scott. Uh, like I said, not the way we were anticipating at all. Uh, absolutely not, Marty. And I think of Dan Weldon, just a superb person, a very, very fast race driver, somebody that I'm going to certainly miss not only here at the IndyCar track, but some all the time at the kart track, and somebody that all the young drivers looked up to, Eddie. And we'll continue to look up to an amazing human being with so much enthusiasm, and I'm at a total loss. I, I just can't believe what just happened. He always had a smile on his face. In fact, he had actually done three television broadcasts with our Versus crew, the people that do the races when we're not on. And uh, who knows, he may have had a career there. Many people ask me why I always sign off till we meet again, because goodbye is always so final. Goodbye, Dan Weldon.